Hey folks, it's Cliff, back already. I know, right? Keep it on a uh, schedule, or trying to keep it on a schedule at least. Uh, even with these low quality videos, they take a while to produce. So, uh, I mean, the bare minimum I put in. So, anyway, on to the video. So, we are, we have the T56, uh, T5600 in front of us, and a few things that happened between now and the last video. Uh, one thing, the 256 gig uh, M2 SATA SSD I put in died. So um, it was uh, I, I was using it basically as a USB drive for the longest time. So it, it probably just hit its rewrite cycles and it failed. So I ended up um, buying a 512 gig one and putting it in there. So that's it installed down here. Uh, it was funny because you know the system locked up on me and it just I couldn't open anything and uh, I was like uh, so I hard powered it on and off and then it was like nope no more drive. So uh, RIP 256 gig drive. And I also found a uh, 100, um, megabit, 100 megabit, 1 gigabit uh, PCI Ethernet card and just to fill in this bottom PCI slot. There's also only one um, gigabit Ethernet port on the motherboard, so I guess at least now there is a second one. So, I mean, that's going to be running over the PCI bus, which is, should should cover it theoretically because there's nothing else on that bus or besides integrated peripherals on the motherboard. Anyway, oh, and last thing, I fixed the DVD drive. It turns out the screws I were using were slightly too long, uh, even though they were only M, uh, they were only two, no, three millimeters long. They were still too long, so I ended up using um, the actually same storage of M2 screws I used for this card. I used to attach the DVD drive to the chassis, so now it actually opens up. So what we're gonna go now through is we're going to um, just go through the BIOS, make sure all the settings are right, and we're going to install Windows 10. So as you can see, here we are in the BIOS, assuming I don't hit the tripod. Uh, so here in PCIe slot, we have MT. That should be right because there's technically no NVMe drive. We got a video card, a RAID card, a network card, and an Ethernet card. So I guess technically the Wi-Fi is considered network and the Ethernet is considered Ethernet. CPUs, here we go. We have our 32 gigs of RAM at 1600 MHz. These are ECC um, registered DIMMs. So I'm going to put up, for this system, we could go up to 64 easily if we wanted to. I think the max is 128 or 256. Uh, 256, you would need, if I'm doing my math right, you would need um, eight 32-gig uh, DIMMs, which I would be probably pretty expensive for this system. Uh, oh, I want to check out some CPU specs. So these are two Xeon E5 26670s. These are the V1s. That's what the zero, I guess, is for. At 2.9 gigahertz, I believe one core could boost up to 3.5 gigahertz. So that's not too bad, all things considering, for um, the Xeons. Uh, they're usually lower clocked, and um, they can, uh, at least this one, can travel up to a reasonable speed. So we have UFEI boot enabled. This, I had already set up the system and was using Windows 10 on it when the drive died. Oh, yeah, I want to go here to HCI. No, uh, SATA. Oh yeah, look at, oh no, okay, so now one thing's fixed, I, the uh, SSD is correctly detected if I went 12 gigs, but the, <laughs> I didn't plug in the, uh, the SATA cable on the DVD drive, so I have to go fix that, so smart porting, I think everything else looks pretty good, I didn't change a lot of things, I reset the defaults, and I went in, I just enabled a few things like UFI boot, I uh, turned on the TPM, just because, why not, uh, turned off um, uh, legacy CSM, and I'm basically just need to go in fix the oh, hyper threaded make sure that's on. Yep. I just got to go fix that SATA cable and then I'll go ahead and start up the Windows 10 installer. Okay, as you can tell, this is not a Windows 10 install screen. As uh, normally, things are not going to plan. In this case, I believe it's the result of this Perk H310 card. So this is the onboard, um, not the onboard, the extra additional uh, PCIe card that has the SAS ports for all the drives. And I believe this is causing issues because these two SATA ports on the motherboard, I don't know if you can see them, I need more better lighting in here. But there are two SATA ports on here uh, that are, I believe this one's black and this one's white. And these are called, uh, I think they're unlabeled. Yes, they're unlabeled. Uh, just called SATA 0 and SATA 1. Apparently these are reserved for optical drives only. And that could have actually been the issue. Could not my SSD could not have actually died. It could just be that these don't really like to have you know uh, hard disk drives, or in this case SSDs connected to them. So I connected it to the other SAS port, not the SATA ports on here, and marked HDD zero through three. So these four ports are apparently handled by the Intel SCU controller, which gets disabled on the presence of the perk card installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this Adaptec. Um, I believe this is. Uh, which card is this? This is an ASR206 or something? I hit somewhere around here. 
Yeah, ASR2405, I mean. So I'm going to install this instead, hook up the drives to this, and it should also allow me to use the desk uh, SAS drives and the SATA portion on the motherboard of no issue. And I believe the SAS port on the motherboard does not do anything according to Dell. So we're going to go ahead, swap out these SAS cards, and see what happens. Well, when it rains, it pours. So, um... I don't see any drive to install. I guess I might have to install the Intel SEU driver, but after removing the PERT card and booting it up, I still didn't see the RAID option available. I believe I, I do have it enabled in the BIOS, but I believe I have to go back to um, Legacy Boot and enable CSM in order to see it. So what my tentative plan right now is to put the card, the PERT card, back in the system, take out one of the one terabyte hard drives, and just put in a um, SATA SSD and just boot off the perk card, because I've had, I've had enough of this. It's uh, definitely uh, way too much effort just to get it this configuration to work. So I will pull the um, uh, the Silverstone card I have in there and maybe just put in just, uh, I don't know, a slot blank. I don't have anything to fit in the PCIe um, X4 slot, really. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and... Uh, what is this, a 10 minute video now of me just trying to get Windows 10 to install on this machine, even though it was working before? I mean, I guess technically working before, but anyway, uh, let me go ahead and do that and we'll be back. So I think I had a, a what we call in the internet a big brain moment or a galaxy brain moment. I'm like, wait a minute, this perk card has two SAS ports on it. So why don't I just hook up the uh, SATA SSD to the other port? So I had a free SAS cable in my my spare parts. I ordered uh, a pack of two for another project, and I had that free one. So I just put that, not free, but the spare one, put that in there, and I connected it to the uh, SSD. And so that should help help us keep all four drives that came with the system and also use the SATA M2 SSD that I ordered. So... Hopefully <laughs> this all works, but I mean I've been saying that a long for a long time now. I'm gonna go ahead and boot up the system and we'll see if we can install Windows 10 finally. Jump cut to a week later, but here we go with the system finally up and running after they decided to take another different path. That path included removing the M2 SATA controller and the M2 MVME controller and just a hard drive and just putting in a solid state drive in one of the hard drive bays. Because when I plugged in the um SSD to the second port on the SAS controller, um, it just would not integrate into the array or it wouldn't build into any array. I couldn't even make it just initialize it as a disk. I, I don't know if that was an error of the controller, error of the drive, error of the M2 adapter. I, I don't know. I, so I'm just like, I give up. So uh, this is a week later. And as you can see, I finally have Windows 10 installed. This is on a 160 gig or 180 gig Intel SATA 3 SSD. It's one I use for testing. So I'm going to go ahead install all the drivers, and we'll go do some benchmarking. Okay, uh, system's finally set up and running. I got all the drivers installed. I uh, made a few system tweaks. I'm getting all my benchmarks ready to go. Let's see how easy this is to do for the viewfinder. I'm not sure how it's going to look on the other end. Can I actually do this for this future? Okay, let me launch CPU ID, uh, CPU Z actually. Sorry, my voice sounds a little raspy. Still a little bit under the weather. Uh, so we have a Xeon, our dual Xeon E5s. These are Sandy Bridge GP based. This is 32 nanometers. Uh, I think it clocks anywhere from 1.2 gigahertz all the way up to 3.3 gigahertz. So not bad. Has most instruction sets. It has AVX, which is very important. Would like to have AVX 2.0, but I don't believe that was added until the E5 V3 series, which was Haswell based. Uh, so this is Sandy Bridge based, then Ivy, then Haswell. Uh, so it's, I think the Intel high-end desktop CPUs were one generation behind always. So when you had an i7 3090 30K, which was a uh, the Ivy Bridge, or was the uh, what was called the um, was a Sandy Bridge, even though it had an Ivy, Ivy Bridge naming, the 3000 series moniker. So I checked out hardware monitor. And we have some decent temps. Uh, there looks like they're idling in the 40s right now, going up to about the mid 50s to 60s under load. So that's not too bad. Uh, let's see. Let's go through the main board here. We have uh, PCIe Gen 3, which is nice. X79 chipset base or C600, I believe, which is the workstation equivalent. We have our 32 gigabytes of DDR3 running at 1600 megahertz. So that's 800 megahertz. Uh, single data, uh, not single data rate, but the normal megahertz. It's a 1600 <laughs> DDR. 60, yeah. Oh, wow, I really should write a script for these things. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to run a uh, crystal disk mark 
on the SSD. I just want to make sure that the park controller in here has a pretty good speed. I believe it's 6 gigabits per second, but I just want to double check that. It's also going over the PCIe bus, uh, but I believe it's only a X8 Gen 1 bus, which should still be plenty fast, but I um, just want to make sure. If it's X8 Gen 2, it will be fine, but I don't know if it's X8 Gen 1 or Gen 2. And it's also shared off, obviously, all the three other one terabyte drives in here. I'm going to run a Passmark test and a Cinebench run. And then if I uh, zoom on out, I'll be installing some games eventually. None of these will be running right now. I just have them installed. I'm going to try out uh, Halo Infinite. Uh, let's see, Apex Legends. Um, what did I download? Oh, Fortnite. I was going to say, what did I download the Epic Team Store for? Oh, yeah, Fortnite. And then Call of Duty Warzone. So I think that's a pretty good suite of modern games to test on the CPU. So I'm going to go ahead and run these benchmarks, and I'll be right back. As you can see, here's Passmark score. So I ran all the benchmarks and I actually took pictures involving my video editing techniques, or I guess video making techniques. Now, if I only just wasn't standing in front of a tripod by my couch, that, that would be different. But okay, anyway, so we have a, in Passmark 10.1, we have a 63rd percentile CPU score and around 50% for 2D and 3D graphics. Again, this is a 1060 in the dual um, 6 core Xeon. Uh, I gotta pull them up real quick. I can't remember the names of these things. They don't make any sense. But anyway, um, that's in the, in the um, CPU and graphics performance. Memory Mark was in the, oh yeah, Xeon E5, and it just gives me the name E5. That's nice. Oh yeah, 2660. Um, 2667. So uh, that 2.9 gigahertz. So with those two CPUs, we got uh, 1300. In two thirteen thousand two hundred thirty. I mean, that's what I'm going to say. Oh man, this is going to be a rough clip right here. But anyway, just mark we got forty first percentile. So um, the SSD in here is pretty dated, but I can confirm that it's running at SATA six. At, I mean SATA three six gigabits per second. As you can see, we're getting five hundred megabyte read, four hundred megabyte write. This at one gig gigabyte. Uh, the sequentials is not very good, and the write I mean, this is reads 500 megabyte read, 400 megabyte write, and our uh, 400, 200 megabyte write. There we go. Okay, take a break. Okay, here we go. We're on track now. Let's go to R23, Cinebench R23. I can zoom in, in here for you guys. This is the multi-core uh, CPU score, and we scored just under a Ryzen uh, 7 1700X. So first generation Ryzen 8 core 16 thread CPU. That got 8,889 marks, and our dual Xeons got 8,766. So multi-threaded, it performs just about like a Ryzen 7 uh, for, from the first generation. Obviously, this is at stock clocks, and it's also a Ryzen first gen there on, you know, 5000 series now so it's it's definitely a dated cpu it scored better than as a lot of some looks like just the defaults on here are just you know mobile cpus old intel mobile cpus and some older Z, the older xeons the xeons that predated this and a 7700k in single thread score uh the situation is a lot worse uh, this scored 614 uh points in single threaded which puts that just right under the Xeon that comes above it, which is the um, uh, which is Ivy Bridge based, and but above the Xeon that predated it, the Westermere or uh, Nahalem. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, one of those older CPUs. As you can see, a Threadripper 1950s, uh, 1950X is 945 single core thread performance, which is definitely going to be the limiting factor on this system. So that's it for benchmarks, and I was able to get that clip relatively painlessly delivered. Uh, what am I doing right now is I am, if I zoom out a little bit, I installed all my game launchers. Uh, these weren't running during the benchmarks, but I have them downloading all my games, uh, or the games I want to test out. So one of them is going to be Doom Eternal. Uh, I'm going to test out Doom Eternal, uh, Half-Life Infinite, uh, Call of Duty Warzone, and Fortnite. And that will be in part three of this video. So now that I actually got the system up and running, and I have everything installed, I'm going to go ahead, edit this mess, and upload it, and then we'll be back for part three, which will just be gaming. Until then, I'll see you then.